1986, a BBC 40 Minutes documentary followed four wealthy friends on a fishing trip to Scotland. But what the fishing party caught was a series of outspoken and controversial opinions which shocked many viewers and made it one of the most famous films of its era. It was entirely the crowd's fault. Jumped out in front of me, shouting, see Kyle. And I said, that's it. Tally ho, boys. Ben, it's six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> 40 minutes on revisits the original documentary. And 20 years on, its main participant speaks for the first time about the film and the issues it continues to raise. We could not have done or said more stupid or irresponsible things in front of a camera. The point of the fishing party is that it was, it's very symbolic. It is about a group of young people who were in power, um, in power economically and socially. They were in the ascendant. Um, these people were the entrepreneurs, the people who were making money, the people who were making far more money than they'd ever made before. It's Playing around, it's twitchy. There was no doubt that um, their ethos, their sort of um, attitudes, ha were causing a lot of concern among other people. Um, and what was so good about the fishing party was that it brought it all together. Um, you could, during the course of this expedition on a trawler to the north of Scotland, you saw the way they thought, what, what their lives were about. The film was offered to director Paul Watson. Watson had made his name as a pioneer of observational documentaries like The Family. It was a chance to say something in the juxtaposition. I was getting very concerned in those days about how to put things together in, a, in, in, in some way which was trickle-down judgment. That Three days later people might say, I've been got at. That film wasn't about fishing. It was about what's going on in around the government or what's going on wherever. The death sentence is only passed when one is as certain as one can be and it's never ever a hundred percent but let's say ninety-five percent is good enough for me. In fact probably in most cases ninety percent is good enough for me. One way or another the, this was scandal. It was taken very seriously um, because it represented what was thought at the time to be the, the new values. As a result I think the sense of irony that there occasionally was in what the main character, Guy Cheney, um, the most important of the four, I think, the most articulate and the most interesting, um, he was occasionally making jokes which were taken straight. Um, these, the program had an enormous impact on their lives. Um, I'm not altogether sure I'm happy about that. I think it was reasonably fair to them. But it was a polemical program. It was a program that was putting a point of view. And, um, well, I hope it didn't do too much harm to them. <laughs> In 40 minutes time, we'll hear from the fishing party's leading character today. But first, the original film from 1986. Early October 1985, and a group of friends plan a fishing party. A chance to get away from the daily news of doom and gloom. Here on Pentland Firth, Scotland's most northerly waters, there are other preoccupations. Certainly, I've never sat on a trawler in the North Sea for four days, and I expect confidently to be violently seasick on at least three of them. <laughs> I think I'm acting steward. Um, Perhaps more on the liquid side than on the food side, as hopefully that'll be lock fin, kippers and porridge for breakfast. Um, my job is to supply the rum, which I understand is a major requirement for people who are going north of the border. Um, it's, I understand from Robert, a special request for Robert, to have a bottle of champagne for when he catches 
the world record skate and he, he's asked for me to supply him with some Krug champagne. Oh, Robert? Well, this is nice. <laughs> well, what's all this I hear of your, your escapade up to Scotland? Uh, this a lunatic friend of mine is, uh, wants to go for the record. He's very keen on fishing. He wants to go for the uh, catch a record sized fish. And apparently, the conditions are very favourable in Scotland at the moment, or Scarpa Flow. God, sounds, sounds quite fantastic. Good morning, gentlemen. Some... Would you like oh, to order? Good morning. What would you uh, like to eat, Sam? Um, I think I'll, I'll start with potted shrimps. Potted shrimps? And what are you going to have? Uh, I, th I think I'll have some oysters, actually. What oysters? Half a dozen oysters. We've got to get over around 186 pounds. And Guy tells me that this fish is 15 feet from side to side, which sounds remarkably like a good fisherman's story. And no doubt if we lose the fish, it will be at least 15 feet from side to side. The records are in excess of 200 pounds. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, 236 pounds for the halibut and 212 for skate. But there are much bigger fish there, much, much bigger. They've been seen before. They've been caught in trawl nets, but never been caught in a modern line. Um, you, they're a possibly fish up to a thousand pounds, halibut up to a thousand pounds, but I don't think we're going to see those. We might see skate in excess of 200 pounds, and obviously what we're looking for is a halibut in excess of 200 pounds. And uh, as I say, I think we're, it's all good, all systems go. It looks good. If the weather holds, we don't get some really rough weather, I think we're going to be, uh, be in for a chance, in for a very, very good chance indeed. The Tottenham area of North London is quiet this evening after last night's violent rioting which left a policeman stabbed to death and nearly 250 people injured. Last night's troubles in Tottenham brought a new dimension to inner city rioting that began this year in Handsworth in Birmingham a month ago. For the first time, firearms were used by rioters. I don't think we'll have a French Revolution style because I think underneath, actually, the British are very, very loyal. We are British. More so than any other race, I think, almost in the world. Come on, Watson. And when it comes down to the nuts, these people will fight amongst themselves. They'll fight the police, they'll fight anybody, but they will always believe in their country. But whatever the reasons immediately behind these latest disturbances, the police, for their part, maintain that a petrol bomb factory was established there some time ago. I think a lot of these race, what I considered race problems, are... Uh, are stirred up to a large extent by the far left and uh, the loony left. Um, it must be easier to uh, manipulate people when they're on drugs. There's a lot of people in these, uh, all these areas seem to be sort of uh, full of drug users. I was horrified at the Labour conference that not one delegate said anything um, good about the police. They all damned the police had used dismay and grief to burn, stone, and then to kill. The ferocity of the attack was senseless beyond belief, he added. During the rioting, the commissioner had deployed members of the tactical firearms unit. I don't ever think it's a bad thing to have a strong personality leading a country. I think she has great feeling for the population of the country, and I think particularly perhaps as a woman, cares more for the people um, in the same way, perhaps, as the, as the Queen cares for the people. The Commissioner is convinced they can cope through traditional policing methods rather than by introducing CS gas and water cannon, despite the fact that they believe that political activists are determined to find another opportunity to strike again elsewhere. Guy Cheney, a commodity broker, claims to make in a good year half a million pounds with his partner, John Buckland. Now, the October goes off the ball fairly soon, doesn't it? This afternoon in their city office, the hope is to sweeten the income by yeah. dealing in sugar. Oh, David, we don't think so. Very well, you? Lovely holiday, yeah. John left you some at 60 and some at 3 double didn't he? Uh, I can't, I'll cancel it, put it in at 60. OK. The oxen are doing Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, New York slipping. Thank you very much. Much obliged, Peter. Yeah. Cheers. We're out on that bike in front. Oh, it really doesn't matter anymore, does it? Uh, we have no intention of delivering well, sugar. Is Peter there? We are merely trading yeah. a contract month, which is an obligation to deliver sugar at a given price on a given uh, over a given period. We have no intention of Peter, actually ever making that delivery. Uh, buy five at fifty-one sixty.